Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the CFS Health Recovery Podcast. My name is Toby Morrison, and I am your host today. In today's episode, we have an incredible conversation with a beautiful, beautiful woman by the name of Anne Mary. Anne Mary is 65 years young. Yes, young, not old. Her energy is just through the roof. She's waking up with energy every single day. She battled chronic fatigue syndrome for over seven years and this lady went from sleeping 18 hours a day at her worst to now painting her house, riding her bike, jumping on the trampoline with her grandkids and really living again. And so in today's episode, Anne and I have a little chat and we talk about her journey, we talk about all the things she went through and shares some of the biggest pivotal moments in her recovery and she actually shares something really profound on how to accept where you're at and how to move forwards. So without further ado, I want to give a big shout out to Anne Mary for jumping on and doing this interview and sit back, relax and enjoy this episode. Hello everyone, it's Toby Morrison here and on the other end of the screen we have Anne Mary. Hey Anne. Hello. Hey, thank you so much for coming on. Today we are talking about chronic fatigue syndrome recovery and I'm so, so thankful for Anne to be coming on today and sharing her story because, you know, I got to witness the first hand through our program and it's just been an incredible journey to watch Anne go from where she's been to where she's at. And so just a massive thanks, Anne, for coming on today and sharing your story. Oh, you're more than welcome. If it can help anybody else, then yep. Yeah. And your story is incredible. And by the way, I love the pink hair. Like we've got to just mention the hair right now. <laughs> and uh, Anne said... Uh, Air today she goes oh I kind of diet every once a month just to change things up a bit and I totally love that <laughs> <laughs> so good thank um, you <laughs> oh, I was just going to say the other good thing is my husband can always find me at the shops he just looks for what my hair color is and ta-da <laughs> <laughs> for anyone who doesn't know Anne lives in a tiny little town in Victoria on 75 acres of farm and so you might be hearing some dog noises or some bush noises or some bird noises uh, <laughs> you, you said before off air that you've got like a little national park around it's like your own little beautiful yeah. spots of paradise yeah it is it's absolutely beautiful very lucky we never know what we're going to see when we look out the windows what do you see because there's a lot of people from like 50 other countries who have never been to Australia what do you see on a day-to-day -day basis you said wallabies Oh, yeah, sometimes we see wallabies. We often hear koalas. We often have possums. Occasionally, goannas wander around our fence line. Drives the dogs nuts. But, yeah, the goannas just sort of go, yeah, whatever. We bring it on. <laughs> oh, echidnas, they're just beautiful. Oh, wow. We don't see wombats, but we know they're there because they poo on sticks. So when we go for a walk, we see their little square poos perched uh, on sticks. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure why. <laughs> You've got your own little zoo there. For anyone watching this, Anne, how old are you? Just for some context. I'm 65. The funny thing was when I first got Ross River virus in 2015, I remember saying to people, I felt like I was 80. Mm. And then I started to get better after 10 months and then the chronic fatigue kicked in. And I said to people, I now I feel like I'm 90. Mm. <laughs> so I felt so much worse. So now I say, as I'm getting older, I'm actually getting younger. I've already been 80 and 90. Now I'm coming down. <laughs> I'm getting younger and younger instead age, of older. Yeah. Amazing. Let's, <laughs> yeah. let's go back there. So 2015, you got Ross River fever. And then that months and months later turned into chronic syndrome. Yeah. Before you joined the program what were some of your biggest challenges oh at my worst I was probably sleeping 18 hours a day mm. I, I barely walk and I'm very grateful because after being in the program and seeing what other people are starting at you know they can't even get out of bed mm. at least I could do that but 
over the years before, so it was about seven and a half years before I joined the program, before I found you, which was my lucky day, I had got incrementally better, but I was still having to sleep for about three or four hours every afternoon. You know, I was very limited in what I could do. I couldn't cook. Everything was frozen. And then when I joined the program, I think after about a month, I was on amitriptyline. 25 milligrams and I started to go off that I started having the energy to cook and that just made a big difference mm. but I think yeah I just was stuck I guess I was about a level three or four Erin said when I first joined with what I could do I could go for a little walk and go to the shops with my husband he drove everywhere because I just didn't have the cognitive ability to drive but now I'm driving to my daughter's, which is 15 minutes away. It's still in the country, but I'm gradually, I remember in one of our coaching calls, I asked you about driving and you said, just do a little by little. It's always little by little. I love yeah. that. It's my favourite quote. And so now I'm starting to drive into the local school, which is 15 minutes away, and then my husband drives the rest of the way into town. And I'm looking at extending that this year. So little by little, I'm going to drive a bit further into the more traffic and build up my confidence. Little by little becomes a lot. Oh, I love that. That's my favorite. Yeah, it's important because it's all about consistency, right? Consistency over intensity. Oh, it is. And I think the biggest thing I got from when I joined the program that initially I wanted to watch every video like most of us do <laughs> you know oh, I'm going to do it all today <laughs> and, um, and I remember one of the first ones the fundamentals was you saying just watch a couple of videos yep. just have everything you think you can do or should do. And yeah. you know, when people do that team building exercise where they fall back and trust that people are going to catch them, yeah. that's what it felt like after watching a couple of the videos. I felt like I've just got to let go and wow. trust that you've got me. And that's how I felt the program caught me, you know, and was supporting me. And that was how it went with the mindset that I was going to just hand over to you guys. And Everything I tried had got me so far that you guys were the guiding light in a way. I don't know how many times I said to my husband, Toby said, I've got to do this. Toby says, do that. It was always <laughs> Toby this, Toby that. <laughs> sorry, husband. So, sorry, but not sorry. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's incredible. I actually didn't know that, that you had that experience of that fully trusting the process. And to be honest, I've never really thought about it too much, but there is a process that you need to trust and it's your process. It's your own process of doing the things, you know, doing the work and fully leaning into it. And it's funny because you were someone who came into the program and you kind of really got into it pretty quick. Like you started to make some progress and get some runs on the board and yeah, I'm sure you had some hard times through it, but yeah. it wasn't like you were sabotaging the process. It was like that effortless leaning in. I'm trusting the process. I'm going to get what I need and I keep moving forwards. And I'm glad you brought that up because I think so many people struggle with that, like of not trusting the process and second guessing everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And you see that in a lot of the comments, because that was the other thing that was wonderful, that Facebook family. That was just so good. And to be able to pass on experiences but I think the thing was there's always that niggling doubt that so-and-so is now rock climbing but is it going to happen to me there's always that little am I going to be the exception you know but I'm not it works if you just trust and let go and it will work mm. and I must admit my mindset I didn't realize I was quite a way along the path with my mindset until sitting in on Gemma's coaching calls. I was already curious. I, I was already grateful every day. I actually had a similar experience to you, Toby, that you said in one of the videos where you saw someone, you were feeling really bad and you saw someone who, I can't remember if they were in a wheelchair. There was a guy, he was basically yeah. missing his arms and legs. And that morning I was complaining about life and I was basically blaming the world. 
I was so angry at the world. Why me? Why do I have to suffer like this? Why can't someone who's a meaner person who yeah. probably deserves to be more sick than I am? And it was such a victim mentality. But yeah, this guy in the wheelchair was getting pushed past me and he was disabled. He had no arms and legs. And as I had my hoodie on and I was walking down the street, just feeling sorry for myself, he actually looked at me and smiled at me. And <laughs> I'm getting teary thinking about it, but yeah. he got pushed further back. And in my mind, I thought, how can he be happy? You know, like, I don't understand it. And I looked yeah. back and I looked over my shoulder and he looked over his shoulder again as he was getting pushed away from me and he smiled back again. And then that's when I was like, holy shit. How dare I? How dare I complain? Exactly. I've got arms and legs, you know, like he didn't even have a choice. Yeah. There was really Jeez. the pivotal moment of my recovery because I went home that night and that was the first day I wrote down a list of everything that I was grateful for. And from that day on, I focused on what I had control of. And it really yeah. was the pivotal changing moment in my life. And, you know, I got to thank that guy so much for, for smiling at me. Yeah. That's sometimes all it takes. And the thing is, if you can focus on what you can do rather than what you can't do, it is a real big turnaround. The experience I had was I'd just been to see a physio and I went in to see if there was anything proactive. I could, this was before the program. Proactive I could do, like little exercises, anything that could help improve my strength. And she basically said to me, now you're going to be like this for the rest of your life. So I was coming home, driving along our road, which is a country road, and this young man in a wheelchair just popped out of a driveway. I have never seen him before or since. <laughs> and it was just that split second as we were going past and I saw him and he was only young and in a wheelchair and I thought, oh, far out, I can walk to the toilet, you know. He'd probably give anything to be able to walk just to the kitchen. And that was the universe's slap in the face for me. Get over it. Yeah, all right. Yeah. I never really got down, but there were a couple of times, like to be told, you're going to be like this for the rest of your life by a professional. I just thought, oh, no, I don't want to be. <laughs> so when I lucked upon your ad, because I was meditating, I was already doing things like that and a little bit of yoga. So I was on that path. And very grateful every day. And if I could wake up without feeling that I had my lead suit skin on, that was a real bonus. Because as you know, some days you wake up and even your eyelids feel like they're made of lead and you can hardly keep them open. Yeah, I was grateful every day and grateful for my family. And I was lucky I didn't have to try and work or anything your like husband. that, like a lot of people. And wonderful, supportive family. Yeah, and then I saw your ad and, you know, initially you sort of think, oh, is it sounds too good to be true. You know, anything like that, you sort of think, oh, God, but you've just got this lovely way about you and just watching all those free things that you put on the internet mm -hmm. made me realise that you're very genuine and you're passionate about helping others. And the more I learned, the more I went, this is for me. This is it. And then, you know, when I joined and the baseline, I remember you saying that one of the people on the program watched the baseline video like five times to finally get it. And so, yeah, I kept watching it and watching it. And then I had that light bulb moment. And mm. basically, I never looked back. That baseline is amazing. Once you get it, once you really understand it, you, you just keep going forward. What's the difference between trying to understand the baseline theory but when you said like once I finally understood it tell me what's that experience like is it a body thing where you are finally in tune with what is right for your body and you're just in tune with it you're not second guessing and tell me what that is for you getting it for me was realizing that I wasn't at war with myself that I could just let my body control my thinking rather than my thinking trying to control mm. my body my thinking saying come on mind over matter you can do this and pushing and pushing and then crashing and crashing but instead sort of reversing that I guess and letting my body lead the way for a while you know telling my mind 
no, my body's in charge at the moment. My body says I can only do this much and that's all I'm doing rather than pushing mm. through. Never ended well when you push and crash, as you know. I think that was it, getting it that, okay, my body is capable of this today and then I'm resting. Mm. And then when I felt a bit better, I, okay, I can do a little bit more and no, nope, then I'm resting. And then realising that once I've done that for a couple of weeks, I could actually do a little bit more and it was slow it was slow but it's again that little by little becomes a lot and you know in a matter of months I was easily walking the dogs I don't have a nap in the day I have a rest after lunch and that's after two or three hours of painting the house (laughs) (laughs) yeah you mentioned before Toby I'm painting my entire house inside and out and you know, you're building your strength, you're standing on ladders. I mean, painting is a tough gig, man. So it's amazing the strength and stamina that you have now, but it it makes sense because you built up appropriately and you progressed and then you maintained and then you progressed and then you maintained. And these these like stepping stones that you did over time that really made the biggest difference. I did everything and then, you know, crash for Mm. three weeks. But if you just pull back and go... I will be able to do everything later or over time. And you just, right, today I might try and do this. And if I don't do it and I get tired, that's okay. I'll try again tomorrow. And then, yeah, you just gradually build up. And, oh, oh my goodness, that day that I rode 14 kilometres, which was a dream for years, seven and a half years I dreamed of getting on my bike and riding to my letterbox, which is seven kilometres away. <laughs> she was on 75 <laughs> acres. It's like the size of a town, basically. <laughs> and you have to go up to seven kilometres up to the letterboxes, which are at the side of the major road. So that day that I rode up to my letterboxes and home again, because we used to do that all the time. I used to ride 80 kilometres and you know, go hiking and camping and to be able to just ride to the letterbox. I think I cried. It was just like Christmas it was the most exciting thing and sometimes now my biggest problem with sleeping is I get really excited about what I've got planned the next day and it might be I'm going to weed the garden and I wake up at six o'clock and go oh I'm going to weed the garden oh I can't wait I'm going to mow the lawn oh that's so exciting so everything even though chronic fatigue seems to deprive people of so much once you get better even those simple things that a healthy person would just go oh god mow the lawn it's exciting because it's something you've not been able to do Mm. so yeah every day is just so much fun (laughs) even sweeping and vacuuming yay i can vacuum the house yeah exactly (laughs) oh totally and i'm sure people can relate at home to that people just take that stuff for granted but yeah when you can do it again it's like wow this is just nice to be able to do it again oh oh it, it's magic yeah it's just, even those simplest things are just mm. the biggest gift so yeah there's a whole new world out there at the other side of you know getting better and you appreciate everything so much more I want to talk about your attitude and, you know, if I look back through when you're in the program and just the way you showed up and the types of questions that you asked, you asked always really powerful questions. Never did I really see you once a question that was in a negative connotation. It was almost always like, you know, Hey, I've got this problem. What solution would you suggest best for me? You know, it was always framed in a positive light of, you know, what can I do to help myself? in this situation and it was a really empowering place and I can just hear through your attitude now of like you really did have that can do attitude you know and I think that's one of the biggest pieces of moving forwards is not focusing on what you can't do focusing on what you can do and I think that can happen when you accept your current reality yes yeah I think you're 100% right. And that's one of the things you talk about is accepting isn't giving up. Mm -hmm. It's just accepting. I think I've always been like that because once I had a lot of problems, I had tendonitis and bursitis or something in my shoulders. and, And I went to the physio, but I didn't have a list of what I can't do, which was a lot. 
I framed it to say, I, these are the things I want to be able to do again. I want to be able to put the seatbelt on. I want to be able to do my hair. I want to put deodorant on again without pain. I want to be able to put my backpack on so that everything was what I want to do again, not what I can't do anymore. I guess that's always been my attitude, luckily for me. But that's what Gemma does so beautifully in all her coaching calls. And Erin and you, you know, that try and change that mindset of people into a more positive framework yeah. so it gives them something to build on rather than instead of a loss think of what you've got and build on that yeah, and it's create so the important new, create the new and <laughs> you certainly did that and yeah big shout out to Gemma Hanley our mindset coach and Aaron our general health oh. coach as well and all of the coaches it's all about tools Absolutely. that are at your disposal and using the tools that you need and you know what advice would you give to someone who is in the program right now, who is maybe at the start of their journey, it's all a bit fresh to them? What's like your best bit of advice you could offer them? Again, I would think just hand it all over to you guys. I saw a video the other day, it was Pink's new song, and I think it's called Trustful. And I just resonated with that so much because that's the fall I was talking about where you fall mm. back into the program. Trust you guys have got you. You've been there. You've done it. You've helped so many people and you will keep helping people, but they've just got to hand over their trust. Trust to you and just follow your advice. Don't second guess it. Don't undermine themselves mm. but just trust what you're handing them you've got everything covered you know all those videos like I said when I first started I wanted to do it all I'm going to get better by you know tomorrow afternoon at tea time <laughs> I'm going to be better it doesn't work like that you've no. got to just work through it's so incremental which can be frustrating but that's where you've just got to hand it over you can do that and yeah. hit the singles every day and trying to hit the big home run you know eventually it's just going to work but it's funny that you mentioned that because if I look back at the people that really succeed really well through the program in a really relatively good amount of time it's exactly that don't second guess anything they join they invest they focus on it and they don't second guess oh my should I do that oh no I don't know if I'm oh they just do what they need to do in the moment what is the next best step what is the next best step and if they just keep sticking at it over time that changes and evolves as you change and evolve and then just gets better yes. gets better you know so it's really neat that you're kind of sharing this it's fascinating where are you at now just to paint the picture no pun intended but where are you at now i know you said you're painting your house but like day to day you're writing your 14 k's to the letterbox you know you just seem to be having a bunch of fun at the ripe age of 65. I am. And the, the, the beginning of this year didn't start that well. My mum, who was an incredible 101 years old, wow. passed away. She passed away at the beginning of January. And on Boxing Day, which was her 101st birthday, she was still dancing. <laughs> she was amazing. Wow. So we had that. We had that at the beginning of the year. And I got through the bereavement or the eulogy and you know, all the other stuff, cleaning out her room. And we got gastro on top of that. And I, I got through that, no going backwards. And, and every day I wake up full of energy, which I, sometimes I think, oh, I've got energy today. Oh, again, and again, that's amazing. Where I've had years <laughs> of waking up, you know, maybe one day in three months I had energy and, wow. and, and the rest it was drag yourself around mm. but every single day I wake up with energy and even with all those things that life you know that happens mm. I'm still waking up with energy and appreciating it so much and I can actually plan I can actually think I'm going to do this I'm going to go do this tomorrow where before it was you wake up you don't know what the day's in store, what energy you've got. But to actually be able to plan, I have a friend who lives 15 minutes away. I can plan to go out to lunch with her now. And mm -hmm. I drive to her house and then she drives me into town because I'm not quite up to driving into town yet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to be able to just 
think, right, next Thursday at three o'clock, I'm going to go and have coffee. You know, it's just doing normal things that I could never do before is magic. And I'm doing yoga. I'm working on, you know, building up my strength. Of course, I'm up and down the ladder and painting. <laughs> so, yeah, just every day is a gift and it's just magic. I love it. Since you joined the program and you did the program, what significance has that had on your life? Yeah, I felt like I was in a cocoon or, you know, you're sitting on a seat at the edge of the road watching life go past and occasionally mm -hmm. you can say hello and, you know, that life drifts past. But now I'm actually in the stream and I've missed out a lot on some of my grandchildren over the last seven and a half years. But I still have two little ones and one's going to be four soon and one's going to be six. And I got on the trampoline with them. And, oh, man, I had so much fun. <laughs> that is so good, Grandma, jumping on the oh, tramp. It was, I had so much fun. So I'm actually being able to play and, and just really enjoy that. I got the energy to talk with them, mm. to play games with them. Mm. And with my husband, you know, sharing our love for bike riding with him. I've spent the last seven years watching him head off to go riding with all our friends and I'm not quite there yet but I'm hoping this year I'll be up to exactly. going for some rides with some yeah. of the groups and again like I'm not expecting it's going to happen tomorrow I'm still a work in progress and I've got a lot of building up of strength to do I'm not like you know 30 <laughs> anymore but even though I feel it <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well you're just living life again, you know, and you're just building into your goals and what you want to focus on. I think it's just absolutely incredible. I think one of the biggest things too was boundaries. Like when I first got sick, I was still thinking I should be helping other people. Mm. And I tried to do that, not realizing that it wasn't helping me at all. Mm. And I think that looking back now, that probably took me a lot longer to progress if I had just you know, said no. And it wasn't family. It was people outside family that I was trying to help. And my family were great. You know, they were so supportive. But boundaries is so important as well. And that's another Gemma thing. It's okay to say no. Mm -hmm. That's so hard. That is uh, so hard when you're used to being a people pleaser, I guess, isn't it? Yeah. And you have a whole boundaries workshop that takes you through the process of giving you the framework to set a boundary. So. Cool. And the guilt workshop, oh my goodness, that was absolute amazing. The program is an absolute treasure chest of information, of guidelines. It breaks everything down for you. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's all there. If you follow the steps, you will get to the treasure at the end, which is having your life back. Two years, a doctor kept saying to me, take this medication. It was amitriptyline, which she said was like a neurotransmitter blocker. It was an antidepressant, but mm. on the lower dose, it blocks neurotransmitter pickup, which gives you more energy and helps with chronic pain and sleeping. So after two years, I finally said, all right, I'll take it. Whatever, <laughs> nothing else seems to be working. But after a month on the program, I thought I'm ready to cut that out of my life and very gradually, I took little and little amounts and didn't go backwards. I was just going forwards the whole time. So now I'm on no medication. That was so good because I didn't want to be on that. And it was all because of the program. Yeah. I just knew I've got this instead. I don't have to rely on the medication now. I've got this. And it worked. Yep. So I'm just, I'm just so thrilled. So that was my lucky day. And <laughs> your ad just popped up. Was it on like Facebook or Instagram or something? It was, like? No, it was YouTube. I was oh. just doing a yoga thing. And then I was just getting up when, you know, how ads start. Well, and yeah. your ad came on and I was thinking, oh, another ad. And then I heard you say CFS Health. And I went, oh, hang on. What's this? That was how I found you. And I just sat there and listened enthralled. So, yeah, it was my lucky day. Yeah. I'm so grateful for that. Yeah, well, I have to thank the company GMS. They helped put our work into the world. And I think it's just so important, you know, we're here to create a ripple effect. And I'm so grateful that you were doing that yoga video because 
if you weren't watching YouTube and then that video didn't pop up of maybe a free training to help you get started on your own and one thing led to another for you and the program felt right, it felt good for you and I think we all go through that. I was talking to one of my coaches the other day in life and business and I remember I met him 10 years ago online and I thought he was so dodgy. So dodgy. (laughs) And I said that. He just looked too slick and... I was like, it's not possible what he's talking about. I told him the other day and then he said, oh yeah, sorry. Sorry for being like too slick and nice. He goes, I'll try and be more messy next time. (laughs) But it's just funny because I think that's how we work. And until we kind of build trust over time and make sure there's some legitimacy and you feel like it's aligned, then I think it's just a natural process, you know, but yeah, just so thankful again for you and for GMS and for everyone. But ultimately it's about that ripple effect. And I mean, your grandkids you know, must just absolutely just thrive around you because you've got their energy, you know? Oh, I have now. Mm. (laughs) It's just this magic to be able to do stuff with them. And a few people have said to me, they know of people who have got chronic fatigue and I've just recommended your program. I've sent them screenshots of your face and make sure you see this person when you're yeah. looking it up. What um, would you say, and- Anne? What would you say to someone who's watching this video right now who's umming and ahhing about the program? Uh, maybe they've just joined the program or maybe they're thinking about joining the program. What would you like to say to them from you? Oh, just do it. Just do it. I, I don't think twice. Just do it because if you do what you're told or what's recommended your life will have no choice but to get better you will find you again under there under all that chronic fatigue your little light will start shining what if they think oh i can't afford it it's too much money or what if it doesn't work for them you know how people just have those fears and i'm sure you probably yeah. Felt it too. yeah oh I did too, because, you know, initially you think, oh, is it real? You know, it's a lot of money to pay out. Is it um, worth it? Yeah. But is it? Is it worth it? Yes. Yes, it is. To get your life back, it, it is worth it. And it isn't that much money to get your life back and to yeah. be able to do things again. Definitely go for it. And you will not be disappointed. Mm. As long as you put in the work, you I was know, you, say that. A, yeah, you got to be willing to yeah, do the work. Yeah, like you say, this isn't a magic pill, it's not going to here take this, you'll be fixed. You've got to do the work and you appreciate everything. And I know like, when I first started the coaching calls, you know, you sort of think, oh, it's an effort. You know, some people turn up and they can't even sit up, they're lying flat out, you know, they haven't got the energy to even sit. And they're still coming. Mm -hmm. They're doing the work. Yep. And And then in six months later, they're sitting up. And then in 12 months later, they're standing up. And then the amount of times that someone's been there and then 10 months later, we're on a group call and that same person is now on the speaker giving advice to someone else who was there, (laughs) you know, and they're saying, oh, these are the three things that I did back then and this is what I'd focus on. And it's just, it's so beautiful to watch. And thank you so much (laughs) for, for being here today and, doing this interview just on behalf of everybody and me just a big thank you and all the people who are watching this right now oh. i'm saying it on behalf because i know how helpful this would have been for them if there was like one thing that you just want to say to anyone who's going through a pretty hard time right now what would you like to leave them with find something in your life to be grateful for mm. it doesn't have to be a lot just the fact that you've got fresh air to breathe is a start fresh water to drink you've got a roof over your head hopefully you know just start with something little to be grateful for Mm. and gratitude just builds gratitude and it starts attracting positivity into your life and just even if you don't feel it just keep repeating it to yourself because eventually it's like an affirmation it's hard not to be happy and smile if you keep telling yourself you're happy and you've got things to be grateful for. Does that make sense? Yeah. Gratitude creates your attitude. Ah, yes, it does. It does. When I was told I had chronic fatigue, I thought, okay, it's taking a lot from me, but I'm not going to let it take my happiness. Okay. Physically, I can't do a lot, but mentally I can still be happy 
I've still got a lot to be grateful for. I've still got so much joy to be grateful for. I'm not going to let chronic fatigue take that as well. I don't know if you know this, but when I founded CFS Health, I came up with the same analogy that it's a choice. You can choose to stay where you're at, or you can choose to rise and do what's necessary and have non-negotiables of what you've got to do to help yourself improve your health and your life. And so CFS Health stands for Choice, Freedom, Success. Did you know that? I love that. Yeah, I love that. that. When I heard that, I went, yeah, that is so good. (laughs) Because that's what it is. You're choosing now for the freedom that you're creating in your life. And then therefore that freedom will create the success that you have, whether that's starting a new career, whatever, playing with your grandkids, all of it is success, you know? And so you're going to have crap happen, (laughs) but you can either have crap and be miserable or have crap and find some happiness somewhere. Mm. And and there's always a reason. I love that with always Gemma about being curious, step back and go, why is this happening and what can I do to fix it? Or, you know, there must be silver lining here somewhere. So, yeah, definitely that curiosity is good. Mm, Every day is a school day. Yeah, (laughs) it is. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you've been amazing. Thank you so much for being on here. And it's just a pleasure to see you so joyful and living life again. That's what it's all about. Oh, thanks, Toby. You're you're worth a million bucks, honestly. (laughs) You gave me my life back. I don't think I'll You got your life back. You did it yourself. We just helped (laughs) you do it. Yeah, but no, honestly. You showed me the way. (laughs) Yeah, and you did it. And so thank you for sharing that. And also well done for doing it. You know, you're you're living example of the work, you know, you're doing it. And go keep kicking ass at life. I will. I'm going to go after have lunch. I'm going to go and paint the toilet. All right, go. You go. Go and enjoy that painting. Play some music and have some fun. I will. I'll see you later. Thanks so much, Dan. Bye, love. Bye. Hey, I hope this video was really helpful for you. If you haven't already, please hit the like button and feel free to leave a comment. What was your takeaway, your insight from today's video? It's really helpful to actually write your learnings down. We seem to embed it better and it seems to help us move forwards with life. Here are three ways we can help you right now whenever you're ready. The first way is make sure you add yourself into our free information recovery group on Facebook. We'll leave a link in the description below. It's a really supportive, encouraging place. There's no negative venting. You can ask questions to other people. There's something like seven, 8,000 people in there right now. And I'm sure by the time you're watching this video, there's even more. So go over there right now. We share success stories. We share our latest free trainings that come to the public. And we always share upcoming information about upgrades inside our program. And also when we offer free webinars or free information nights that can further help you with your own recovery. The second way we can help you, which is one of my favorite, is through all our free trainings. We're going to leave a link in the description with our favorite free trainings that we know can help you start your recovery, whether that's through our baseline training, which will help you stop pushing and crashing our three stages of recovery to figure out exactly where you're at and know what to do next. Or my favorite, which is our guest panel workshop, which was actually exclusive for our members. It was so damn good that I actually asked them, can we share this to the public? They all said yes, all five of them. So thank you past members. They share their five recovery secrets and it's really powerful. There's tears, there's aha moments, there's real key insight and inspiration. And so whether you're a one out of 10 and you're really struggling right now, or whether you're further along in your recovery journey and you're integrating back into life, we have you covered. The third way we can help you is through our actual paid online recovery program, the mentorship recovery program. And if you are interested in getting proper help, a holistic comprehensive plan, professional coaching from the best coaches in the world, whether that's with mindset, movement, nutrition, restorative movement, reconditioning, integrating back into life, integrative medicine, baseline, structure, routine, accountability, all things health and life. Feel free to apply for the program today. All you need to do is click on the form, cfshealth.com form, fill out the short 
two to three minute form application and the team will be in touch with all the details that you need to know about the program via email. So make sure you check your spam folder for all the free trainings. If you've sent through an application, please be patient. My team are real people, okay? They're not robots. So if we don't get back to you within seconds or hours, it's okay. <laughs> we will get back to you. If you don't hear from the team within two to three days, that means that it's basically gone to spam or junk and it's gone missing. So please send a follow-up email to the team at info at cfshealth.com. If you have any questions, go check it out. But I would highly recommend adding yourself into the free group right now. Go click on that link in the description. Go download all the free trainings. Honestly, the whole reason why this whole thing started is because when I went through this myself, it was so painful and so excruciating that I didn't want anyone else to have to go through it. And some of these free trainings are so damn valuable. Back then, I would have paid thousands of dollars for. We've had so many comments and emails and posts saying, oh my God, the baseline training was a game changer for me. Toby, I've been doing this now for three months and I'm feeling so much better. My symptoms are decreasing. I've got more stamina. I've got more energy. I'm able to do more things. So, you know, whether you're learning from us and consuming our content through our free format, I'm so stoked. Whether that's in our paid program, I don't really care. Either way, all I want to make sure is that you are moving forwards. You are starting to really implement this work. And that's really what it's all about. Once we implement, we make change and we start to move forwards. Sending you a ton of love. Of course, feel free to consume as much of the YouTube videos as you like. There's so many really, really great ones, new and old. Sending you a ton of love and uh, speak to you very, very soon. All the best for now.